So if it's okay with you, I'm going to just keep going because we have quite a bit to cover today. I'm going to walk us through some slides about how the strategic planning process has been going. As you know, it's been going on for several, several months now. Um, this, what I'm going to present is very much a work in progress. Um, so we would appreciate your, your feedback and your comments. As I go through the slides, I'm going to, like I said, move through them as rapidly as possible so that you can jot down your questions and then when we get to the end, we'll have plenty of time for questions and, and comments. Um, and like I said, we're really looking for, for feedback on this draft. Um, this is the members of work group number five. Uh, I won't go over them in detail, but we had representation from all the colleges, uh, a mix of faculty, staff, and students. These are the uh, major goals of the uh, strategic plan. You can see they're divided into three areas. Strengthen and focus our core mission. Advance a community of engaged citizens. That's where group goal number five and six are in the plan. And then uh, the third major goal, uh, or the third major unit of the goal is engage in smart growth, excellence, and accountability. We're gonna be talking about five and six today. For a group, I'm gonna talk about goal number five first the positive environment for faculty and staff. We came up with three main action items that we would like to work on over the next six years. To strengthen and support our talent, mutual accountability and ethics, and recruit and retain national and international <coughs> talent at both the faculty and staff levels. Some strengths that UK has now, um, we offer a highly competitive benefits package as we saw it. Um, it's committed, the university's committed to having a full-time faculty comprised of scholars and teachers and not relying on adjunct faculty. Uh, we have an office of faculty advancement um, to pro that provides a full range of services and uh, work life is active uh, for faculty and staff in developing professional and personal goals across all stages of careers. Strength supplies challenges, we have challenges as well. You probably know them. Uh, on the last work-life survey, only one-third of the staff were satisfied with their salary. Our work group really focused a lot on the fact that there's a lot of consternation that there are not clear career pathing, especially for staff in the same, for staff in the same way there is for faculty. Uh, faculty salaries have remained rather stagnant, um, and salary is one of the main reasons that people consider leaving UK. We felt, to skip to the bottom one, that the campus is lacking a, a clear programmatic mechanism for identifying and training future leaders and staff and faculty. Challenges provide opportunities. Uh, we feel that we have a lot of space to develop inno innovative policies to help acclimate and train department chairs and supervisors to advance the goals of the strategic plan and to set salary targets for staff and faculty that are benchmarked against salaries for the best institutions and to aim to be above the benchmark. These are, so the way the plan is divided, um, underneath the goal of fostering a positive environment for faculty and staff, um, the first action item is to strengthen and support our talent. We start with increased compensation. The tactic number two, increased professional development options for faculty and staff at all stages of their career. To really think purposefully about the way faculty and staff can develop their careers um, clear pathing for staff and for faculty to help if they want to move into administration or to just help more purposefully through the ranks of uh, the faculty life. More tactics for the strengthen and support our talent, uh, work-life effectiveness. Our group spent a good deal of time talking about um, what some people call work-life balance, other people call work-life effectiveness, making it as, as making it most possible for people to thrive in their jobs in a culture of uh, flexibility and accountability. Foster an environment of positive health and wellness. Uh, we live in Kentucky Estate with a great deal of health problems and it's incumbent upon the university to be a leader in having a positive health and wellness situation. Um, to support employees intrinsic motivations as well as their desire for appropriate reward and recognition. Um, one of the things that came out clearly is that we can do a better job of helping people feel valued uh, by making it clear the specific ways that they are valued. We came up with some draft metrics for how we will measure the outcomes of where we are. I'm going quickly as well because all of this is on the web and I hope you've had a chance to, to look at it or will have a chance 
um, after our town hall, and you can always look at it and then send in feedback as well online. Our second action was to ensure a culture of mutual accountability. One of the things we talked about a lot was clear performance review criteria and expectations that are transparent and knowable to enhance a system of tracking faculty productivity and rewards so that we have a better sense of where our faculty and our staff are excelling so that they, so that they can be properly <coughs> rewarded for that. To use, this is for faculty, tactic two, type two, three, to use the title series, the different title series that faculty can fall into more effectively um, to advance the goals of the colleges, whether it be regular title, special title, or clinical title. To train leaders on best practices for, to promote accountability. Um, one of the areas where we talked about, a, talked about a good deal was making sure that both supervisors and department chairs um, had a thorough understanding of um, the actions that they are supposed to take in any given situation that comes up. Evaluate the process for overseeing faculty and staff to ensure consistency and fairness, especially as relating to ethical behavior, accountability, productivity, and to provide avenues for disclosure of results of university activities. To, one of the things we really felt we, was important was a culture of transparency that there is greater, more moments such as this where there's give and take feedback. Um, action metrics for goal number two, uh, they largely have to do with, with tracking our participation <coughs> in um, career development um, and con contribution to research and grant funding um, and making sure that job standards are assigned uh, in accountable and transparent ways. The final action item for uh, goal number five, that promote a culture of, of, of promote a positive environment for faculty and staff, is to recruit and retain top national and international talent. Not unrelated, of course, to the first goal of supporting our talent. Engage in best practices to attract and retain diverse pools of talented faculty to really make sure that we are following best practices to recruit uh, a, diverse, a, a diverse and talented pool. Um, of candidates for jobs. Encourage creative partnerships and collaborations around shared teaching, research goals, and mission. To increase the number of named professorships, faculty and staff memberships in societies and academies, and, and to increase the faculty and staff who receive such awards. And to uh, tactic three, four, to increase the recruitment of professional staff on the national level, to really make sure that we are recruiting nationally as well as locally for, for positions to try to make sure we get a diverse <coughs> and talented pool. Those are our metrics for, our proposed metrics for number three. Like I said, this is all in draft form and can be changed. Want your feedback. So I'm moving quickly so we can get to that. And again, of course, um, as we're taking questions and, and logging feedback, we can go back to any slides that you, that you would like to see more fully. This is the members of root working group number six, the diversity and inclusion group. Randa Reamer and Deborah Harley. Uh, Randa, of course, from the College of Health Sciences and Deborah Harley from the College of Education were the co-chairs. <coughs> there are also, I should say, several people from groups five and six here today who can probably also help answer questions and talk about our processes as we, as we get to that point. Enhance the role as a place of collaboration for, for peoples of all identities is goal, is goal number six, the diversity and inclusion goal. And it has four key action areas, as you can see. Foster a diverse community of engaged students. Improve workforce diversity and inclusion. To structure diversity efforts into our culture to make sure that our efforts at diversity and inclusion are threaded into the very fabric of UK, to incorporate global perspectives into the UK community is the fourth action item for this. Strengths, UK has increased its number of African American faculty and the number of Hispanic faculty. UK faculty collaborate and partner with educators abroad and the number of enrolled underrepresented minority students has increased over the past several years. Challenges, 
The overall level of diversity within the ranks of faculty and staff remains too low, as do diversity levels among the senior ranks and the university leadership compared to national statistics. The UK is behind the mean for gender distribution in several in seven of the nine National Center for Education statistics. Collecting data is its own challenge, and the university lags in retention rates compared to its benchmarks. So we have some significant challenges. They continue. We have had a decrease in financial assist, insist, assistance along with an increase in tuition. Salaries are below market value. This relates to the first one. It makes it particularly difficult to recruit a diverse faculty. We fall behind in sexual diversity inclusion in, general, in our general university policies. It's been in some ways an absence in our policies. That's one of the things that the working groups have hoped to um, ameliorate in this plan. And we lack, we felt, robust resources to address the needs related to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and sexual identity questioning. Um, that part of forming an inclusive campus that weaves it into the very fabric, uh, makes sure that that lacuna in our uh, policies to this point is corrected. Challenges provide opportunities. We're committed to enhancing our role as one of the most diverse places in the Commonwealth. Um, by definition, by the, just by definition of where everyone comes from, UK is a diverse place, but it obviously needs to work on its inclusivity. Our students have a strong commitment to new junctures related to diversity and are likely to welcome initiatives in this area. As I said, I'm a professor of English when I'm not doing this. My students talk about intersectionality a lot. They are, they are in a lot of ways ahead of the university on these issues. The numbers of college-aged individuals in Kentucky who are Hispanic, Latino, and African American are likely to increase. The living learning programs provide a real opportunity to foster a environment of diversity and inclusion. And the UK can leverage the, its existing and future diversity by acknowledging the intersectionality of identities on campus. By acknowledging and providing places where we, again, weave it into our fabric. Action one are the four action items for this goal. To provide a safe opportunity for our students to engage actively in dialogues about diversity. To provide places where we can have open and sometimes difficult conversations to address our demographic imbalances, to expand the awareness of all our students reg regarding the importance of engagement in diverse activities. Again, this speaks <coughs> to, to making diversity a key pillar that the university rests on, to, provact, to proactively engage K through 12 students and their families so that they don't experience a culture shock when they come to the university, but that we hope that our own efforts at diversity and inclusivity um, have have trickled down and have prepared students. Action number two, to improve our workforce diversity and inclusion. Increase our opportunities to build engagement and knowledge in diversity issues and goals. It's important if we're going to do that that we hold our academic and staff leadership accountable for increasing the pool of diverse candidates. This of course also relates back to goal number five. They mesh in this in that if we're going to create a diverse and inclusive environment, someone has to be held accountable for making sure that those goals are actualized. Chairs, deans, supervisors. Conduct training and professional development initiatives on explicit and implicit bias to make sure that people can, that we can sometimes get outside of our own views to understand that, that they are partial in all senses that we might have implicit bias that prevents us from understanding where, where our interlocutor might be coming from. To encourage consistent and ongoing education about the multiple identities and affiliations of people. Tactic 2-5, to expand and strengthen support within the university for the expression of gender and gender identity. That speaks to our inclusivity goal, of course. And to make sure that we are working also at a programmatic level to examine our HR procedures, our promotion practice, and our salaries at benchmark institutions to create a competitive structure for our employees, to make sure that our, our, our goals and our ideas rest on a solid skeleton of programmatic activity. Structure diversity efforts into our culture. This is what I've been talking about in terms of <coughs> weaving it into our fabric to evaluate, strengthen, and develop programs to improve student, staff, and faculty diversity, 
to expand our formal and informal curricular and co-curricular activities that strengthen those relationships. We tried to write the tactics in such a way that they mesh and build on each other. To engage the community in defining what it means to be diverse and inclusive. And inclusive. To leverage technology to create interactions with and among diverse groups. Tactic 3-5. Can, again, to make sure that we have good tracking and that we're actually trying to accomplish, we're programmatically trying to accomplish what we're saying, to conduct annual benchmark studies and continually review our overall progress. To make continual progress on improving access for persons with disabilities, to go above and beyond the ADA mandates. 3 7. To create a more inclusive environment by incorporating many forms of communication in multiple and alternative languages. And tactic 3-8, to proactively engage the local community and to expand partnerships. This tactic, of course, also reaches out to goal number four in the, in the overall plan, uh, which is engage uh, with the community. Action four, to incorporate global perspectives into the UK community. To expand opportunities for improved communication with key UK partners, to maintain focus on international students' concerns. Um, as I know again from my own uh, teaching, our students are extremely interested in internationalization. They really want to look outside of Kentucky and then be able to come back. To provide professional development opportunities for faculty and staff to promote meaningful global interactions against all programs of study to provide formal and informal structures for the academic support of international students while monitoring academic performance um, to make sure that we essentially have the right materials and structure to help our international students to thrive. To ensure the active integration of international students into UK's academic and co-curricular areas. To expand our resources to better support our students, our faculty and staff studying and serving outside their home countries, and to provide opportunities for the inclusion of international perspectives. An example of this is something that the UK College of Arts and Sciences does every year. It has a, a year of, uh, this year it's year of Mexico, next year it's year of the Middle East, where it works to have uh, speakers <coughs> and programs that, ad that address a particular area. We would like to expand that type of activity. Tactic 4-7, to expand global partnerships with other educational institutions. Students have a huge interest in study abroad, and we would like to make that something that's woven into the fabric of the university, and to really enmesh them in a foreign culture and not just go as a tourist, for instance. To expand partnerships with community groups having international ties. I went very quickly. Um, like I said, we're, we can go back to any of the slides that you feel that you might need to talk about, um, or if you have questions or you want more, um, more elaboration. Uh, like I said, the, the, my co-chair is here, and there are several members of group five and six, and we can talk about our process and our thinking, and like I said, this is very much a draft, so we would be happy to hear your questions and thoughts.
really talk about diversity and inclusion. I think using the word living learning programs maybe actually limits the ways that we can have those conversations. I know we're certainly having them among other co-curricular activities as well, and in, in student organizations also, I use for instance the alternative service break program that's very embedded in social justice. It's not just traveling and doing service for a week, but it's also really learning about a specific issue um, as it pertains to the trip itself. So I didn't know if maybe that language could be broadened at all, or, or if, it, if not, I totally understand, but I thought I'd just... It was mentioned specifically under um, one of our opportunities because of the expansion that's going on okay. on campus right now. Sure. We didn't mention some of the other pieces that you're talking about because we're trying to be more broad when it comes to the tactics to make sure that we are addressing things that can fall under a greater umbrella. Sure. Um, so certainly the, the things that you're discussing absolutely would fall under some of those tactical, tactical areas. It would be areas we would need to address within the metrics to look at as supporting the tactics.
towards addressing our inclusion issues. <laughs> are there things that when you look at this you are jumping out of you and saying you've missed an opportunity to address the summer campus? Either in terms of creating a positive work environment for faculty and staff or diversity and inclusion in general. Buffalo, uh, which um, 
Michelle <laughs> brilliantly kept logging for us are things that we can turn to the implementation teams that we think is a good idea. <laughs> you walked out and in at the most opportune time. <laughs> um, we were talking about the interweaving of our faculty and staff into the community and how they don't always, individuals who are hired here don't always feel like they have a place in the community to feel connected to and also that the community doesn't necessarily feel like they're connected to the university and how are we going to address that so that faculty and staff that we hire um, feel like they have a place um, that they can belong to on a personal level. So is there a question to me? <laughs> it's just more of a if you're willing, to, so if you're willing can, to entertain it, it kind of was. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, it was more a statement, but I think it's something that I know I never had considered as much as <coughs> I, you know, have a lot of privilege in the fact of uh, being a member of the community here as a student prior and things like that, so I think just not knowing how difficult it might be for folks to connect, I, I feel like I have a lack of But I don't know if that's necessarily their responsibility. But, you know, I think how do we as a university help foster that for our staff and faculty? And is that something in the community that we may be lacking or just unaware of? So it's more common. Hi. Oh, I'm 
strategic planning website, the current working document is on there under each individual goal. So you, if you go, you have to click on the individual goals and it will bring up the working document for that particular area. The only thing that's currently not on there in terms of the working document are specifically the metrics in those areas, and that is because they're still fluid at this moment. The work groups are in the midst of trying to narrow those down because they're a laundry list, and so um, we've been asked to kind of narrow those hopefully in the next couple of weeks, and return those to the provost. And I'm going to let you know you the link to the document. We really do value your, impact, uh, your information that you have and, and feedback that you can provide. So if there is something that you walk out of here and you think to yourself, I really wish I'd mentioned that. Um, both of these groups are meeting Monday and Tuesday of next week, and then we'll um, continue to incorporate even more feedback. But if you do have something that comes to you over the weekend, please immediately you know, send us a note. You can, add, you can either send it to the strategic planning website or to us individually, and we'll be happy to make sure that we're addressing that within the strategic plan. Um, you know, This is not our strategic plan. This is our strategic plan. And without your voice included, um, there's no way that we can make sure that we're addressing all the issues that you think are relevant to the university. So please, um, if you do have some feedback, please voice that. And if you have some things that you think um, would help us in terms of how we're constructing 
um, you know, our metrics uh, or just broader research information that you would like us to address, please also incorporate that into your plan. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming and for asking the questions today, and uh, let us know what you think. We appreciate it.